Okay, now, which one of these was my monoblock again? All these EK boxes look the same. Hello and welcome back to the next episode in, well, part two of the epic that is the MSI Gaming Motherboard. This is, this is going to be the M7 variant, the Z170, and this is going to be the guide for installing your EK monoblock specifically designed for the M7 motherboard. I'm going to be showing you how to install this puppy today, and today I chose the nickel and plexi version so you get to actually see what that will look like on your motherboard once it is installed all right so as you can see guys i have gotten everything out of the box here that has come with our mono block so we have the mono block out of the bag and everything we have our thermal pads grease uh your allen wrench i have all of these little screws all in my little magnetic parts tray so I don't lose track of them or anything like that, along with their washers in here as well. And that something like this just makes things easier to keep track of, especially these really tiny screws. So I guess step one from where we were before would be to install your CPU. As you can see, I've also already installed the RAM as well. And so we're just going to again, give this a flip over here. We're going to take our Phillips head screwdriver. I guess I forgot to mention the tools that you will need for this will be a pair of scissors and a regular Phillips head screwdriver. And so taking our Phillips head, we're going to undo these four screws right here. We're not going to undo these four screws because that is a different heat spreader and we're not going to be uh, working with that at all. So we're just going to remove these four screws here. One. So some of you may have noticed that on yours the heat spreader did not drop. Well that is because it those thermal pads that are pre-installed on the stock heat spreader are kind of sticky, along with the ones that you also got with your EK block. I would not depend on those to retain your block though. So back on the other side, you're just gonna have to give this a bit of like a pulling motion and a lifting motion at the same time because it is stuck to those MOSFETs. So as you can see here, this is some of that sticky thermal uh, thermal padding that is also included with our EK block. And so for storage purposes, I say the best way to do this would be to take your screws and put them back onto your stock block in case you need to return your motherboard to stock. You already know where the screws are. You don't have to remember where you put them or anything like that. They're going to be right there, right on your stock cooler. Now it's time for step two. Now I'm not going to be doing an actual build along with you guys. This is actually going to be what I would consider a mock build. So I'm not going to actually apply the thermal paste to the CPU. Instead, I got this little piece of cardboard so I can show you guys just how much thermal compound we're going to apply here. So you know for, for your reference how much to apply to your CPU. And uh, something that it says on the instructions is going to be two uncooked grains of rice, it says. So I would do about that much thermal compound. And I will have that across the center of my CPU in the exact fashion that I have it centered for you right here. I'll give the camera a bit of a zoom for you so you can see. So just about that much thermal compound is going to be used for this. Any more and you're going to actually reduce the cooling efficiency of everything that you just worked for. 
Now I'll remove this, hopefully without getting thermal goop everywhere. Oh, now it's on me. Great. I'll just set this off to the side. Hopefully that doesn't blow over and cause a mess. And the next step we're going to do, we're going to have our mono block here. I'll scoot this out of the way real fast. We're going to have our mono block here and these thermal pads that also have come with it. We're going to cut these to size. Now there's going to be a slightly elevated section on the aluminum of these blocks. So we're just going to take a measurement here. And uh, uh, I, I tend to be kind of like a speed more speed oriented person so I will just sort of eyeball it here and snip there's my measurement line and I will just cut it across like so so now we have that that'll fit right there I'm just going to do the same with this other section right up here so we just line it up Give it a mark. Finish the cut. And then what you will do next is you will remove this sort of foil from both sides. So one side's going to be clear, the other side is going to be marked blue. As we can see here, blue paper. And you're just going to remove both of those foils and set it on these sections of your um, of your block here. Now this 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 side is going to be a little wider on the wide side, so I actually have the edge lined up with one of the other edges on this block here. So if it droops anywhere, it's going to droop on the inside and out of sight. So you will have these installed, and these will actually stick a little bit. So you don't have to worry about keeping them in place. And you, this is going to be the point after you install these where you will remove this sticker that it says, please remove. But like I said, I'm just doing sort of a mock build for you guys. Now, right before we apply this to our CPU and, uh, and MOSFETs on the motherboard, we're going to make sure all of these little clear washers are already pre-installed on our block. If not, I would check the bag that the CPU or that the mono block came in and make sure that you don't you have all of your little washers here to go on the outside. And then you got, just want to make sure that they are all lined up straight so as not to uh, hinder your installing of the screws on the other side of the board. So we have those all lined up. And bringing our motherboard back. This is going to be a little more difficult for me than it will be for you guys because there's going to be absolutely nothing aiding me in having this stick to the motherboard. But we're just going to, uh, there's going to be two holes right about right here. I'm just going to take the two screws because they are very visible to me and I am going to line up that area and that is going to be my point of reference to make sure everything else is lined up. And so with that, I'm going to maintain a sort of grip on the mono block here. And then I'm going to be gripping the back plate on the CPU right here. So as I'm not actually touching any of the PCB itself as I flip this board over. And I have to maintain a grip on this mono block. Like I said, I don't have anything sticky. You may have to uh, also maintain a grip. And so I'm going to do start this off by just installing the larger screws because that'll make sure everything is in place. And for those, we gotta make sure we have our larger washers installed as well. So we have our larger washers here. I'm just gonna take these larger screws and I'm not actually going to fully tighten these. I'm just going to make sure that they are in the the screw standoffs on the mono block. You have to really make sure that you have these washers installed because if you do not have these washers installed, uh, these screws could uh, actually mess up the traces on your motherboard 
and also cause some uh, interference as well because these are metal screws and what your computer is doing is sending electrical signals throughout your motherboard and you don't want to interrupt those electrical signals with anything else metal that you have there so these are here to make sure all of your data is uninterrupted So EK is kind enough to make sure you have one extra of everything in case you lose one, at least with the one that I have. So I have those all tightened on. Now I'm going to be able to release my grip here because those blocks are not light. And I'm going to start by putting on these little washers now because we're going to move on to using those small screws. And we gotta make sure we're installing four screws here. You don't wanna find out later that you uh, only installed three screws and something seems loose and, or not heating properly. So there's three and four. Now we're just going to take our Phillips head screwdriver here. If There it goes. And I'm going to start by tightening these outside screws. Now you're not going to want to wrench on these. You're just going to want to pull on them till they're snug. Because if you tighten this too much, you will either break the threads within your block or you will crack your motherboard and neither of which you want at all. So after that, we're going to move on to doing the uh, doing these larger screws here we're going to use the included allen wrench that came with our kit here today and I'm just going to tighten one until it's a bit snug here tighten another until it's snug just a bit it starts giving me resistance and there and as you noticed, I went in sort of a star pattern here. I went from corner to corner. And that is so as it's compressing the thermal compound onto your CPU, it is actually uh, causing it to spread in a more even manner. So now that we have it all, uh, they're all tightened to the same, same degree, we're going to give this just a, a little bit more, like maybe a quarter turn more here. Remember, you don't want to fight this. So just like so. And voila. Your brand new EK monoblock is installed. And uh, something to note here, for when you start actually doing the runs on your computer, this side, the side that is actually right above your CPU, is always going to be the inlet. So liquid is always going to flow into here and come out this side. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're building your system. Liquid goes in, liquid comes out. So that is the installation of your EK monoblock. And this concludes the installation guide for our EK monoblock. As you can see, I already have my motherboard returned to stock because I am not ready to install that block just yet. I still have to do a, a burn-in test with this motherboard make sure all my components are working but you can take this as a bit of a preview as I'm going to eventually eventually be doing a build a full Skylake PC build using the i7-6700K and this motherboard we're also going to be liquid cooling it with our new monoblock as well so you guys will be able to see a full system built with these components so I look forward to something like that. Well, use those buttons that the great YouTube gave us. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. You know, express yourself for your mind. And this is Rick signing off with Gigahertz TV.